And again, if you're in this kind of weird situation where you're the non-custodial parent, you might not get the same benefit as you were if you were the custodial parent with a dependent on the form. So once again, however, this doesn't allow the non-custodial parent to claim head of household filing status, which would the, the credit for child and dependent care expenses, not the child tax credit. This is a different credit. The exclusion for dependent care expense uh, benefits or the earned income tax credit, which is another huge refundable credit, which depends largely on the number of dependents, which we'll talk about later. So the custodial parent or another taxpayer, if eligible, can claim the child for the earned income uh, credit. So that's an interesting situation because, again, you can imagine the one that's taking care of, of the child, uh, if they would still possibly want the child to be claimed for the earned income credit, because even if they don't have any income, that could be a significant benefit to them because they won't be paying tax, but could participate in kind of the welfare uh, type of, of benefit program can claim the child for the earned income credit and these other benefits. So again, if this is a situation you're, you're in, you can take a look at publication 501 to drill down on more detail to make sure to get that straightened out. It's custodial and non-custodial parents. So what does that mean? The custodial parent is the parent with whom the child lived for the greater number of nights in 2023. So if there is a dispute about a child as to which tax return they can be on, usually the breaking factor would be who, who did the child live longer with because the assumption would be that they're the ones that are taking care of the child. But now we're looking at this situation where you have the non-custodial parent, right? So the custodial parent being the one that they lived with most of the time, right? So the custodial parent is the parent with whom the child lived for the greater number of nights. The non-custodial parent is the other parent. Now, obviously, again, this gets kind of ugly because if it's a split down the middle, you would think it would be even. That's how a lot of you know divorce systems might work. And then if you were to try to prove the number of nights, you might actually track the number of nights and whatnot and try to say that and document it and all that kind of stuff. So if the child was with each parent for an equal number of nights, the custodial parent is the parent with the higher adjusted gross income. Now, some people see that as not fair. Why would you give the child benefit at the tiebreaker to the one with a higher income? Well, probably because that's the one that's going to be providing more of the financial benefits. So, and possibly it's the one that maybe is going to have a higher tax benefit from it. Although with the refundable credits, that may not always be the case, right? So you can see publication 501 for the exception for a parent who works at night rules for a child who is uh, emancipated under state law and other details. Okay. Post-1984 and pre-2009 decree or agreement. The decree or agreement must state all three of the following. The non-custodial parent can claim the child as a dependent without regard to any condition such as payment of support. So we have these condition, like is the thing conditional on support payments, which you would think would be like alimony or something like that. The other parent won't claim the child as a dependent. So obviously in these agreements, the whole point is that you've worked out who's going to get the tax benefit from the child to best benefit everybody involved so that uh, not both parents will, will be reporting the same child on the tax return, which will of course cause problems into the future because the IRS will see two social security numbers and they'll then they'll, they'll be a blowback on that like for sure. So the years for which the claim is, is released. Okay, the non-custodial parent must include all of the following pages from the decree or agreement. So the cover page, include the other parent's social security number on that page. The pages that include all the information identified in one through four above. Signature page with the other parent's signature and date of agreement. Post-2008 decree or agreement. So now we're after laws change and as the law changes, then sometimes they're going to, of course, be able to say, well, whatever it was prior to that law change, we're going to try to keep it the same because you've, you've already made contractual agreements based on tax law prior to that point. This is what's difficult with tax law because oftentimes you can't change it retroactively. You have to change it from one point going forward. So now we're talking post-2008 
uh, decree or agreement. So if the divorce decree or separation agreement went into effect after 2008, the non-custodial parent can't include pages from the decree or agreement instead of Form 8332. So they have to have Form 8332 generally. So the custodial parent must sign either Form 8332 or substantially similar statement, the only purpose of which is to release the custodial parent's claim to certain tax benefits for a child and to non-custodial parent must include a copy with their return. The form or statement must release the custodial parent's claim to the child without any conditions. For example, the release must not depend on the non-custodial parent paying support.